Okay, before we get started, this is a full and detailed review, so spoiler alert is now. What's up everyone? Welcome to Book Review Monday and my channel. Now I'm back with a new book review for you. Uh, I have read this book multiple times. It's a favorite. This is called Revved by Samantha Daly. Now I mentioned this book in my favorite author's uh, video part one. Um, and this to me is one of, is like my favorite of her uh, books. And uh, like in my opinion this is her best book. I don't know why I feel like this is her best one, but I just do. Um, I will link that uh, favorite from the author's video uh, up in the cards and down below. Um, I love this book. It's an oldie but goodie. And uh, I, I remembered I purchased this back in like March of 2015. And I think it came out right around that time. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it came out right around that time. So it's been around for seven years. So it, it's, yeah, I mean, if you're ready, I'm ready. Let's just go ahead and get into it, shall we? So like always, I read the blurb first and then we recap, review, and then rate the book overall. So let's go ahead and get started. Race car mechanic Andresa uh, Andy Amaro has only one rule. Ha sorry, has one rule. rule. No dating drivers. With a good reason behind that rule, she has no plans of breaking it. Carrick Ryan is the bad boy of Formula One. With a face and body that melts panties on sight and an Irish lilt that leaves women on their knees begging for more. He races hard, parties harder. The youngest driver to ever sign with F1, he's still at the top of his game five years later breaking hearts on and off the tracks. When Andy is offered her dream job working in the glamorous world of F1, she leaves her home in Brazil, positive she can handle working for Karik. But she's not prepared for the off-the-chart sparks that fly the moment they meet. Now Andy has a crush on the one man she can't have and her resolve of it is about to be put to the test because Karik has decided he wants Andy and he plans on testing her to the very limit. Okay then. <laughs> so this book is a race. Like, so we are introduced to Andressa, Andy. She gets offered her dream job working with her uncle at Formula One as one of Carx mechanics. She isn't a stranger to race driving and to race car driving considering her father was one. And we'll touch on that a little later. When her uncle takes her to the garage uh, and lets her walk around and check out the cars, she meets the mechanic team and they're all shocked to see that Andy is a woman. Like, Uncle John <laughs> didn't tell them she was a woman, didn't tell the team that she was a woman. Owen Ryan is Karak's father, Karak's father, and he has a problem with Andy being a mechanic because she is a woman, and Karak will be all over her. Owen, of course, apologizes to Andy after a quick powwow with, uh, with John, and because you learn that Carr had an affair with another woman who used to date, uh, like the previous mechanic, um, who who Andy now has that job. I mean, it created a ruckus amongst the um, amongst the team. So while she is in uh, while she is in the garage. Uh, Karak walks in and is immediately ta uh, taken aback by this exotic, beautiful young lady um, just looking at his car. And he's shocked to learn she is his new mechanic. I, I mean, I love their first meeting. Their first meeting is just, it's so funny. I love how Karak just thinks that she's there for something else. But, and even Andressa, uh, Andy even plays along. But uh, at one point or another, uh, 
she, you know, they, uh, John comes in and tells, and tells them, hey, Andy is your new mechanic, and the, and he is shocked. <laughs> like, she wears a smirk while well, he's just shocked, and it's just, it's funny. They had a very, very funny, yet electrifying first meeting. And I love the song that is mentioned in the uh, in this uh, book a lot. There's like, it, it's mentioned three times in uh, in this book, and I'm hoping I'm pronouncing the last name correctly. But uh, it's the the song is called Dangerous, and it's by Dave, David Guetta. Guetta? Yeah, I'm pretty sure that's how you pronounce his name. But it's a good song. It's a really good song. Um, because so because of this book, that song is now on like my top 25 on my iPod, <laughs> on my iPod and iTunes. I mean, it's a great workout song and in all honesty, it's kind of, I'm not gonna say it's a confidence booster, but it's a definite, uh, like, if you want your, if you want a, mo uh, a mood bo booster, you could put on this song. <laughs> Kark is a bad boy. He flirts with any pair of legs. He's just a super playboy. Andy goes out with the rest of the team after getting settled into her new apartment and she meets Amy, Petra, Damon, Paul, Mike, and Davis. Ben is the, uh, ben is the head and mechanic and Robbie is also a mechanic too and, they, and she met them uh, basically the uh, first time that she walked into the garage. She gets a not friendly vibe from Amy, uh, but she gets friendly vibes from Petra. And it's, it's obvious who she is going to be friends with. Karg ends up coming up to Andy when she's at the bar and he hits on her again. And she does shoot him down again. Then Karg uh, kind of just goes, you know, I'm just kidding. I would really love to be your friend, basically. And, you know, he says he always flirts, but, because he just can't help it, he's, he, he's a big flirt. But he does think that Andy is cool, and, uh, and he wants to be her friend. So they agreed to be friends. We do learn that Uncle John is, uh, is, was close friends with her dad. And he is Andy's godfather. He's known Andy since she was an infant. While prepping for a race, Andy spots another er, uh, race car driver named uh, Nico Tressler. So she goes up to Nico and introduces herself to him. And uh, but he makes like offhand comments about. Um, about Andy being a female and about her being on uh, Karik's uh, mechanic team and basically like he says that Karik not only hired her for um, the size of her chest or the size of her bra like it, it's just rude it's just it's so it's, that's a horrible comment to make to a woman who's just trying to make it and like Andy, you know, Andy ends up enjoying watching car race, and, you know, he's in his element. He, this is his happy place. And he wins this first race that's in Australia, and Andy starts to think that she might have a crush on him. Uh-oh. So, Andy and Car hang out uh, no, during their first day in Malaysia, uh, before race day. They go gar uh, they go karting. <laughs> and they end up having a great time together. Like, Andy ogles him from, <laughs> like, the whole time, has dirty thoughts about him, too. She's she's a multitasker. And she also sees that Karak is a nice guy. Like, he promises a kid who is working the car uh, the carding service tickets to, uh, to a race for, uh, uh, for him and his brother. Like, it's obvious that Karik does like Andy a little more, but Andy tries to keep their work, uh, tries to keep their relationship on a, on a professional level rather than a romantic one. 
We also learned something so adorable about Angie, and she loves the Cars movie. <laughs> so, like, after these two are done carding, they go get some local food, and they come across a stall with uh, jewelry on it. And a Disney Lightning McQueen necklace is, like, dangling down, and, uh, Andy immediately, like, fangirls out, and she just loves it and everything, and, uh, Kara gives Andy a little bit of a hard time, claiming that, you know, he does not, uh, geek out on the, his um, movies because he's not five. <laughs> so she informs him that the next time that they're off uh, from, uh, not racing or anything, or che uh, checking up on the car, they're having a movie night and they're going to be watching, uh, Cars. It, like, she travels with this movie. <laughs> it's honestly really adorable, and Andy actually, no, not Andy, sorry, uh, Karg ends up buying Andy this necklace. I thought that was really sweet, and, you know, I, I did warn you that I will spoil this story. Like, I'm spoiling it. Andy moved from London to Brazil with her mom when she was 10. Uh, her father passed away then, and uh, it's still a sensitive subject for her. At first, she doesn't tell Karg Car what her father had passed away from. Um, she only says it's an accident. Uh, and we're, you know, we already know that and everything. I already know that, but I'm saving that one for a little later. Carr tells Andy his history of how he became a Formula One driver and how it's only been him and his father Owen. And he, he tells Andy, he even tells Andy that he has a quirk too. So she has a quirk with cars, he has a quirk with chocolate bars and before, uh, before a race. So they finally have a movie night, and they find and uh, during this movie night, uh, they watch Cars. They break out the ice cream, um, and it's kind of uh, obvious that Karg is in a funk because he had third because he had gone third place uh, during that race. So Andy tries to cheer him up a little bit by just like kind of teasing him with the ice cream and going like, admit, admit it, Cars is your, is your favorite movie or something like that. Like she gets basically a, a spoon ready and to, uh, to cream him. <laughs> so, you know, she, they end up having like some sort of an ice cream fight. Um, and like he pins her on the floor and he holds the spoon like dangling on her like they're laughing and then but then all of a sudden they stop because they're feeling that electricity chemistry between them. I mean it's sparking and it's a little hard to avoid now. So Karik, uh, whew. I mean they do end up kissing and ice cream is involved so I'll just put it that way. But after they kiss they get into a fight and Andy tells him that the kiss shouldn't have happened because she works for him. He's a driver. She does not get involved with drivers. And you know, you'll, you'll, f you'll find out the reason why soon, I promise. Um, but when Andy comes uh, back to his hotel room t uh, to just apologize to him, the elevators open up and Karg is with another woman. and. You know, he uh, when the woman asks, like, points to Andy and say, "Who is that?" She he says, "Nobody." That's just such a burn, and it just it hurts her. And it hurts Andy so much, and she just you know she runs away crying. Karg does apologize to her in a, in a text message, and he also shows up at her hotel room in a different uh, country. Um, and tells her that he didn't sleep with the woman in that elevator. And, you know, Andy is angry at him for how he treated her, uh, when, when she, and when he's been nothing but kind to her. So it kind of throws her for a loop, and it also throws him too. Like, she means so much to him, and he tells her that she is nothing when, uh, and he said, you know, you're not, no, you're not nothing. You know, like, he actually tells her this now, and he's like, you know, I shouldn't have said that. You're not, you're not nothing, you're everything. Like, oh. He just doesn't know how to deal with rejection, to be honest. So they reach Barcelona, 
um, Karak finds Andy in his uh, in his garage and asks her and asks her to be his uh, dinner date for this fancy event the the next night, <clears throat> and she agrees. And uh, her and Petra go shopping, which is so sweet. They get a beautiful dress, which makes Andy look stunning. And she gets her nails done. Petra does her hair and makeup. Uh, and. Uh, Karak's reaction to seeing his beautiful friend in this beautiful dress and her hair all, you know, hair and makeup and nails and everything just all so done up is the reaction that he has is what all women want. <laughs> so they have some drinks while, while, while at this event and Andy learns that a lot of Karak's one night stands um, would tell him things that they are uh, that are mean and they jab at his career and basically say that he'll be forgotten that he'll be a washed up uh, race car driver that'll that will be forgotten and Andy makes light of the situation by saying something like uh, by saying like oh they're gonna be married and then they'll divorce twice and he'll pay child support and everything and it, it, and they'll hook up every now and then. I mean, they giggle and they dance and they end up having a pretty good time. And there's some serious chemistry happening between these two and it's very obvious and they end up actually sharing a kiss and then they actually end up hooking up that night. And then she sneaks out afterward. As the reader, you think, finally, <laughs> we've been waiting for this. But with, but with Andy, worrying about how this will affect her job, uh, her relationship with Karak, etc. Like, how will, she, uh, how will she deal? By avoiding him. Which makes him angry and they end up having another fight. Then they are in Monte Carlo, which is a sore memory for Andy. This is where her father, William Wolfe, had died. And as Andy eh, and Andy goes out with the you know, with the crew uh, afterwards uh, uh, to to basically just get a drink, and Karak shows up with uh, uh, meeting them with a new girl named Sienna, who claims to be she's Karak's girlfriend. Sienna and Andy immediately dislike each other; like they immediately start trading insults and butting heads. So Andy leaves, but Car follows her, and they walk back to the hotel, they talk, and it seems like they clear the air, except now Andy must deal with uh, Sienna just kind of hanging around. Petra and Andy talk about why being with Car would be a bad thing. Andy tells her that William Wolfe is the uh, who is the famous uh, Formula One race car driver is her father. So Petra immediately understands, but she is rooting for Karak and Andy to be together, as we all are. Um, Karak ends up ha uh, having uh, he ends up having another win, and you know Andy's happy for him. And, but she's also having a hard time because this is the, uh, because, you know, this is the race that killed her father. So, you know, during drinks, Petra asks Andy if she loves Karak. And, you know, Andy denies it, but she does feel something. And it, it wouldn't hurt her this badly if she wasn't, if, if, uh, if it wasn't something more. Then she meets Leandro Silva at the bar, and of course he flirts with her. Um, he informs her he knows who she is because Karak has literally told everyone to stay away from her. <laughs> and um, she's not very happy about that, so deciding that she's had enough of Karak, she just wants to go and party with, uh, with Leandro. And uh, so she informs Petra about it, and they s talk about it very loudly. 
and uh, they leave and come back, but uh, they only part uh, they only had like hung out. They didn't actually like do a lot with with Leandro. And while they were inside, um, Karg is at uh, the bar, and you know Petra leaves to go to her room so Andy can talk with him. And they end up arguing again, and they end up hooking up again, and then they argue again, and this time Karg walks away. When they go to Austria, Andy goes to a vintage car show, and one of the cars is her father's old race car. So when she sees it, she is flooded with memories of her last time that she was in the car. I mean, it's sad. You feel for her. And Karg the entire time is watching her. He came to the car show as well, and, you know, they, they do talk it out, but they don't, they don't talk about the car. They just, they talk about starting over again, which they do, and they end up walking the rest of the uh, car show together. Now, after returning to England for the Grand Britain Prix, or for the Britain Grand Prix, uh, Carr invites Andy over to his place, saying he has a big surprise for her. She goes over and sees her father's car in Carr's garage. Like he, found, he, like he paid for this, and you know she's surprised and she's confused. And, you know, Carr remembered her telling him a car like William Wolfe's car should not be just displayed; it should be used. It should be put to good use, and. Uh, so he wants to fix it up and he wants her to help him. So it means so much to her to fix up her father's car and they immediately get started. It's so cute. You know, they work on the car together and then they end up hooking up again. <laughs> and Karg tells her he only wanted her, he doesn't want anyone else but her. And so after their romp fest, uh, Andy tells Karg that William Wolf is her dad. Uh, is her dad. And he tells her he already knew because the internet says so much. So they decide to actually give their relationship a go. During dinner with Owen a few weeks later, um, that relationship comes to a halt because Owen says things that make Andy second guess the relationship. So she ends the relationship and goes back to Brazil and her mom. I mean, that to me is it's so heartbreaking because I was you know honestly I was really upset with Owen at that point I I, I hated him at that point I have to say that he didn't have to say anything because his son's relationship with Andy is frankly none of his business so two months later Andy sees Karg again he reminds her that he still has her dad's car and uh, he'll send it to her and you feel the tension between them like you you want them you want them back together so badly. It's like, so... Do they get back together? Well, during a movie night with her mom, watching Cars for the hundredth time, probably, Owen comes back. And Andy expresses her anger towards him, which he does deserve, considering all things. And he admits he was wrong to say anything. He claims he's never seen his son in love and he knows that Andy's in love with him too so before he leaves he returns her her um, uh, access pass for the pre then her mom has a talk with her she tells her she doesn't regret anything because she loved her uh, because she loved Andy's father and still loves him to this day. Uh, her mom's name is Katya, by the way, so Katya uh, uh, gives her the push she needs to not be afraid and to let love in. And he takes her mom's car and goes to the race. So on the way to the race, uh, there was... there is an accident. Andy fears it to be Karik, but it was Leandro. So the race is stopped and Leandro is rushed to the hospital. Um, and when Karik sees Andy, he is shocked that she's there, but wants to know why exactly is she there. 
she tell uh, she starts rambling and saying that you know she's so sorry, she loves him, and he is the best thing that has ever happened to her. They embrace, kiss, and they go off to reunite. A year later, Andy is working in the garage when Ark uh, when Karik walks in. I was about to call him a lark. Like no, that's not the same. Uh, he repeats to her the same thing he said to her when they first met, which was, oh, please tell me you're my birthday present. <laughs> which honestly, I love little callback moments that they, uh, that they say. I think that's adorable. Um, like, Revved is one of the books that is in my collection that I never get tired of. Like, I... I have rated this five stars and I wish I can uh, rate it up to ten. Like it's so good and you know you you do feel like like how I pointed out in the in the favorite authors of Samantha Dolly, like you do feel like you've traveled everywhere with this couple and you know you get their you get their journey. You get you see their development of of their um of their own personal character development and then their the progression of their relationship like you get that and you're traveling literally <laughs> all around the world in different countries and i think that's really cool okay you guys so i'm sorry this video is long <laughs> very sorry um believe me after i had ta tacked up all my notes i was thinking oh my gosh this is going to be one of the longest videos i've ever done besides my q and a I know I have spoiled it so much for you guys, but in all honesty, this book has been around since 2015. I mean, <clears throat> down to give you a few spoilers of this book. It was so worth, it's so worth it to read. So thank you all for watching. Give this video a like, comment, share, subscribe. Subscription is free, and I will see you all in the next video.